So here we have some pliers that are squeezing this pipe B with 100 newtons of force on each of those handles. And what we need to find is the force acting on this pipe B and the reaction force at pin A. And so that's where we're going to be going over in this video. If you want the steps for the process of analyzing frames and machines, you can check that out in the description. I've written that out. And so if you find this helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So the first thing we need to do is we need to draw each of these members of the pliers in free body diagrams. And so we're going to do that over here. Okay, so here we have our free body diagrams of each of these members. And we have our X and Y directions labeled. And we have split up our forces at point A, which are the reaction forces on the pin A into their X and Y component and the reaction force at B on that pipe also into its X and Y components. And so you'll notice that we have drawn our where these two members connect at this pin our Y components in opposite directions and our X components in opposite directions. And that's important when you're drawing the free body diagrams of members that share forces which would be the reaction forces where they're connected. So you draw them with equal magnitude and opposite direction. And you'll notice here on this free body diagram, I have drawn force B not split up into its components, and we'll see why here in a minute. But the first thing we need to do is we need to use equilibrium equations to sum forces and moments to find and solve for these unknown forces. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to sum moments about point A on this member. And that will help us find point B because it will cancel out force A sub Y and force A sub X because they pass through point A and therefore do not cause rotation. And so we're going to say that the sum of the moments about point A equals zero because the pliers are in equilibrium. And so you have point B, which is causing counterclockwise rotation, which we'll say is positive. And the reason why we have left it in its, um, not split up into its components is because the moment arm from point, um, point A to where pipe B touches the pliers is 50 millimeters. It already gives us that there. And so, we know that that moment arm is 50 millimeters long. And so we have our 100 newton force it is causing counterclockwise rotation, so we'll say it's negative, and it is 250 millimeters away. This would end up being coming out in newton millimeters, but since we're just solving for force B, it doesn't really matter what our units of length are. So if we multiply these together, add it over the other side, and divide by 50, you end up getting that B equals 500 newtons. And so that is part of our answer. We need to find what the reaction force or the force on pipe B is, and we found that it is 500 newtons of force. And so we will need that later on, and so we'll label it up here. And so now that we have our force B, we can do some of the forces in the x and y directions to solve for our other forces here. But we need b split it into its x and y components. And we can do that using vector addition. And if we use this direction of b, we'll say that this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And this side, our hypotenuse is 500 newtons and this will be b sub x and this is b sub y it's already given to us that this angle here is 45 degrees and because this is a 90 degree angle to add up to 180 this side is also going to be 45 degrees and so it doesn't really matter whether we use this side or this this angle or this angle to solve for it but we're just going to label it that, that way and so if we said that the sine 
of 45 degrees equals b sub y because it is the opposite over our hypotenuse which is 500. You multiply both sides by 500 and you get that this equals b sub y. Plug this into your calculator and you get that b sub y equals 354 newtons. And since these two angles are the same, that means these two sides are also going to be the same, meaning that b sub y and b sub x are equal. So this is also equal to b sub x. And so we'll label it up here, 354 newtons. And this one's also 354 newtons. Well, we found b sub x and b sub y, and on here, that means that a sub x, because b sub x and a sub x are the only forces in the x direction, a sub x also has to equal 354 newtons. So we'll write that over here, that it is 354 newtons of force. And then, to find our force A, or a sub y rather, we're going to do the sum of the forces in the y direction because now we've solved for b sub y and we know that this force is 100 newtons so that just leaves us with one unknown force. So if we say that the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero and you have your a sub y in the positive y direction so it's positive minus b sub y which we found was 354 newtons and then minus 100. Add these over to the other side and combine them. And you end up getting that a sub y equals 454 newtons. And we can label that right here. So now that we've found the x and y components of our force A, we can use vector addition once more to solve for what that force is going to be. So we have our he vector here that is A and it is split into its x and y components and we know them which is 3, 54 for the x component and then 454 for the y component and because this is a right triangle here we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find what a is. So A would equal the square root of 354 squared plus 454 squared, and that equals 576 newtons. So that is the reaction force on pin A. And you'll notice that it is just a little bit higher than what the reaction force is on our pipe B. All right guys, so that's how you analyze a simple machine. If you want a video explaining the process of analyzing frames of machines, there's a video link at the end of this video. You can check that out. There's also another example problem that's a little bit more complicated than this one going over analyzing another machine. And you can check that out also at the end of this video. Down in the description, I've written out the process for analyzing frames and machines. And I've also been creating some awesome designs using the Student Engineering logo. And I've put them on t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, and other things. And there's a link down in the description below where you can buy some awesome student engineering merch and you should check that out. So if you have any questions or suggestions, you should leave them down in the comments. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering. And my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.